Coming up on the 5 o'clock news, 63 passengers stranded after engine trouble forces a Qantas jet to abort its takeoff from Canberra. Deposed Fijian Prime Minister Mahendra Chowdhury suddenly arrives in Australia. Cathy Freeman hints at entering politics. The Olympic flame returns to the MCG. And we look at the lessons that will have you falling in love with snakes. I'll have the details coming up first at five. First at five, 10 News with Tracy Spicer. Tonight, passengers stranded in Canberra after another mishap on a Qantas jet. After 44 years, the Olympic torch returns in triumph to the Melbourne cricket ground. And Labor set to woo Aboriginal champion Cathy Freeman. Good evening. First, another security scare for Qantas. The pilot of a Melbourne-bound jet was forced to abort his takeoff when an engine failed. Passengers saying the pilot slammed on the brakes just seconds before it lifted off. 63 passengers ready for takeoff for a flight from Canberra to Melbourne this morning, but just as the plane was about to lift off, there was a huge flash. It started taking off, a bit of smoke and flame out of the engine. As it started uh, its take-up run, there was a layer, like a really bright flash, and I was sitting on the wing, and I just noticed the flash, and then it suddenly started to slow down. The captain slamming on his brakes, announcing an engine had failed, and the plane wasn't going anywhere. At least he didn't take off. Passengers were delayed for several hours. Qantas choosing not to charter another plane, instead relocating people to other flights. We do sincerely apologise for this disruption today. Uh, we'll do the best we can to get you to your destination as soon as we possibly can. But for many trying to get to the Kangaroos Collingwood game, it wasn't good enough. No, we've really got to go. We're on standby and if we're lucky we'll get there. If the not, they can put us up was one o'clock in the afternoon. We've missed three quarters of the game. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I'll be happy if I can get to Melbourne alive. Qantas says the captain of the BAE 146 aircraft elected to discontinue the takeoff after the loss of power in one of its four engines. It's the latest in a string of mishaps for the airline. In Sydney last month, an emergency chute suddenly inflated. On overseas flights, a windscreen cracked after one plane took off from London, another jet losing its undercarriage at Rome Airport, while last September, a Qantas jumbo overshot the runway at Bangkok, crashing into a golf course. Anita Clark, 10 News. An historic moment in Melbourne today. The Olympic flame returning to the MCG in front of a crowd of more than 70,000. It was a special moment for Ron Clark, who reenacted his lighting of the flame at the 1956 Games. 44 years on, the Olympic flame returned to a standing ovation. A clearly moved former Test cricket captain Mark Taylor was savouring the moment as the Olympic spirit came back to the site of Australia's first Olympic Games. The huge crowd packed the MCG for an AFL game, but first they cheered as former and future Olympians passed by. Then history repeated itself as running legend Ron Clark took hold of the flame. The former Olympian lit a replica of the 1956 cauldron. The opening of the Melbourne Olympics is an image etched into the country's memory, one of Australia's first television events. When Mark actually brought it in, that, that sent shivers down my spine, just to see that come back in the stadium and the, the crowd roar and everybody stand, that was fantastic. I've never actually just walked out thought solely about the crowd. It was a, a magnificent, it was a huge part, which is fantastic. Former Olympian John Landy stuck with his controversial read of the oath he recited in the friendly games. This time, I know for sure that I've read what I read in 1956 and the hell with what they put on the program. The MCG will again be brimming with Olympic spirit in six weeks' time when the first Olympic event, the soccer, is held here two days before the opening ceremony. Before the historic return to the MCG, the Olympic torch made a visit to the 56 Olympic Village, the community once again behind the Olympic revelry. Melissa Aston, 10 News. Deposed Fijian Prime Minister Mahendra Chowdhury has arrived suddenly in Australia, still insisting he should be returned to office. He'll spend a week here having medical tests and talks with Prime Minister Howard. 
Mahendra Chowdhury couldn't hide his relief, embracing family members after touching down in Sydney. In Australia, for a week of talks and medical checks, Chowdhury openly admits his 10-week ordeal has taken its toll. I'm feeling physically weak, I tire uh, quickly, so um, I need to, I've been advised by my doctors in Fiji to have a paramedical than here in Australia. As a guest of the Australian government, he'll meet Prime Minister John Howard tomorrow to discuss continuing tensions in Fiji. Because I think that what happened was totally unnecessary and then it has put the country to a lot of pain and suffering. And, uh, uh, the, the country is going to pay a heavy price for it. Howard says he'll be taking a pragmatic approach. We want the community to come together, but we want it to come together on a non-racial basis. Among other things, Chowdhury wants a return to power and more sanctions against his country if necessary. As for Spate, Chowdhury believes charges of treason are warranted, and that certainly has John Howard's support. We utterly condemn and repudiate the abrogation of democracy and the possible embrace of a racially based approach to the choosing of political leadership in that country that is wholly to be regretted. The two leaders may have more to talk about than they first thought. While George Spate remains incarcerated on an island prison, his supporters are reported to have taken 20 ethnic Indian families hostage. It's claimed 15 armed men rampaged through their tiny community near Labasa, where rebels took over a military barracks three weeks ago. Four or five gunshots were heard as the main road to Labasa was cut. Andrea Clark, 10 News. Champion Australian athlete Cathy Freeman has hinted she'd like to enter politics when her sporting career is over. And the Labor Party's been quick to say it wants her.